So this is an incredibly ugly stretch of buildings on uh, Bullbeg Street. But when I was a kid, uh, coming here, this, this was the Theatre Royal. And the Theatre Royal was uh, it's the greatest, kind of the most glamorous part of, of Dublin. It was a huge, beautiful 4,000-seater theatre. Also had the, the Regal Rooms, a very elegant restaurant at, at the side. It was, the, it was really the place that the ordinary kind of whatever working class people in Dublin, it was like, it would be the highlight, it would be the, 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 you know, the high point of, of the week or the month whenever you could get here to be able to go to see. They put on these elaborate uh, variety shows. There were the, the Royalettes who uh, were these, these long-legged uh, dancers and the various performers, you know, Irish performers, whoever they be, like Jimmy O'Dea. And, and Jack Cruz, but so they were the local talent of uh, variety artists, of singers. This would have been like, a, it would have been the Dublin version of whatever, say Sunday night at the Palladium or something like that. And so it was, yeah, they, they had a staff actually of, of these dancers, and then they would the, the very short skirts and the kind of uniform, uh, the, the kind of semi-military uniform, as I recall, was always kind of like a team with the Royal. I still remember a, a clear, clear childhood vision of being in, I must have been on the balcony, but looking down and seeing this the huge, it was called the Compton organ coming up out of the pit in front of the, the screen of the Theatre Royal and this man, famous man, Tommy Dando. And, and the, he would play the music on this huge, huge uh, organ and uh, the, the words <clears throat> of the song would come up and the, a dot would go across the words. And, and for some reason it stuck in my head, the one that everybody knew about, you know, keep your sunny side up, up. And everybody in the audience would be singing this along. And that's my own personal, absolute vivid memory of being in the Theatre Royal. But to my uh, parents, it was their big, kind of their one big night of the week. They would come to the Theatre Royal. But at one point in the very early 50s, uh, there was a competition going on for the best couple, you know, from the audience performing up on stage. They had this competition going on. Um, Mam and Dad were uh, actually got up as far as the finals. But as they were coming up to the finals, my dad fell down ill with uh, flu. He was very, very ill. And yet, despite uh, the fact that he was ill, he got out of his sickbed, went into the Royal. They got up on stage, and my mum and Dad you know, they were Barney and Molly, and the song they sang was uh, Molly and, you know, well, Molly and me, and baby makes three, we're living in my blue heaven. And they won. They won the competition. And my uh, sisters remember, I'm the youngest in the family, my sisters remember them winning this huge Christmas hamper with all these you know, cakes and biscuits, like tons of stuff, meat and everything. It was like probably the most, uh, I don't know, luxurious, uh, you know, f Christmas feast that the family had seen, you know. Uh, the problem in the end for it was that uh, in 1961, Irish TV started, RT started, and already cinema was becoming more and more popular. And by June 1962, the theatre closed down because it just couldn't, the, the, the presenting, the staging of the, all of this huge variety show um, was just, was too great an expense uh, and, and it couldn't sustain itself. And so in June 1962, it closed down. But the terrible thing was that within months of it closing down, they pulled the entire beautiful structure down and, and wound up building these god-awful things. And like in this day and age, it would never happen. But sadly, the Theatre Royal is gone. So.